What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of the Orlando Magic, P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25's mission, my mission, is really to connect business owners to their ideal peers, customers, and referral partners. And that's really been my life's mission. So when Tim comes on, I meet him, I want, I'm always looking for who I know that he would also know, and that's why I love bringing him on. But we do this in two major ways. One is we help your company completely run and launch your own podcast. We distribute it across 11 or more different channels, including a dedicated blog post we put on social media, so you can just show up and talk, and we do everything else. Um, John and I have been collectively podcasting for 15 years, and I credit podcasting as the single best thing I've done for my business and my life. Besides making best friends, finding my business partner, it's open relationships for customers and many referral partners as well. Um, We also have a done-for-you lead generation service where we manage a consistent outreach to your ideal clients and referral sources. This is not paid traffic, by the way. It's done manually. Um, Since it does require a lot of humans to do the work, we have limited bandwidth, so we only want to work with the right company. So if any of that sounds interesting, go to rise25.com and contact us. I am very excited, as I said, a huge proponent of podcasting, and I've heard of Tim's tool, and I recommend Tim's tool. Um, Today, we have Tim Sinclair, founder of ringer.com, and it's spelled R-I-N-G-R.com, so you get it right. Ringer allows you to record a conversation with anyone, anywhere in the world, and have it sound like you're in the same room. Users of Ringer have interviewed Emmy winners, New York Times bestsellers, CEOs, athletes, and many more. Uh, Tim is one that knows the spoke, the power of the spoken word. Uh, Tim, I was trying to pull up this, um, you announcing the Pacers. Um, and so you may have heard him describing the taste of a sausage from McMuffin, McDonald's, interviewing guests on radio, television, podcasts, or introducing the world's most popular athletes to a stadium filled with 60,000 screaming fans. I want to go to one of these games and hear you announce it. Um, by now, Tim's voice has probably been heard by millions around the world he's worked with. Audi, I mentioned McDonald's, Indiana Pacers, University of Illinois, the Chicago Fire, many more. Tim, thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for having me. That's a heck of an introduction, but I appreciate it. We're doing a podcast for someone. They're, they want to know what tools they should be using, yep. and or if someone's asking me a question on what equipment do I use, it's just one of the things that you tell people, right? right. So it just kind of organically happens. Um who should be using it that maybe isn't yet? Is it certain podcasters or certain industries? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I won't call anybody out, but any specifically, but anybody uh, in the podcast space who's trying to connect with one or two or up to five people and is doing so just through the phone or recording um, a feed. I mean, if, if you're plugged into a network and are recording that feed, it's, it's not too bad most of the time. Um, but man, if you if you got somebody on the other end who it has to be on their phone or is on a computer that's on a home network and you just get that drop out and every fourth word you can't hear, yeah, man, there, there's a solution. I promise you there is. And um, it'll sound so much better <laughs> when you when you try it out. I also think like, um, and I mentioned him a little bit, in in the legal and medical worlds, I think this is going to become more and more a thing where um, you need ways to record what's happening, whether it's business meetings or a deposition or a consultation. Those things can be done and and transcribed pretty easily using our platform. And uh, I'd like to see that play out a little bit more over the coming years. Yeah. Um, You have a portion of your site on Ringer. Worst interviews. <laughs> what is that? And uh, tell me your, your favorite worst interview. Yeah, that. Um, 
So the idea behind that podcast, I think we did 40 episodes or so uh, last year, maybe the year before. And, and the, the idea behind that was, was twofold. One, like I said, I don't bring a whole lot to the table, but interviewing people and radio was my thing. So it was how can we use some of my strengths to uh, increase our brand awareness and, and do something fun in the process. And so a podcast was the idea. As I was going through ideas for the podcast, I was thinking through questions like, what am I going to ask? What are we going to focus on? I was going to focus on like the art of the interview was kind of the idea. And one of the first questions I wrote down for for that was, what's your worst interview ever? Mm. And I went, screw the rest of that. This needs to be the podcast. Totally. Like, this is way better. So um, that's what we went with and tried to interview interviewers uh, about their worst experiences. And one, it was to have a little fun, but two, it was to help spread the word about Ringer. And so every single one we recorded, we recorded on Ringer, talked a little bit about it. It wasn't a commercial, but we sponsored ourselves, essentially. Totally. And um, it was a whole lot of fun. Heard some great stories, everything from uh, rock stars who thought they were doing an audio-only interview, and they were, but they turned the camera on accidentally. And so the guy was interviewing this rock star who's wandering around his house with the camera on, and so he's seeing everything that's happening around him while only recording the audio, but um, it was that was a funny one. Uh, a guy who was in a third world country interviewing a young woman about, the, I think, the plights of poverty, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, in third world countries, modesty is a different thing than it is here, and she had her little two or three year old who was hungry right in the middle of the interview and was still breastfeeding him and just started doing it right in the middle of the interview and um so a number of those that are uh super funny and awkward and uh you know people who are just royal jerks and there's there's a there's a wide variety of them but uh, we had some great stories yeah yeah people should check that out too um tim first of all thank you um this has been fantastic i love hearing this i have one two last questions but people should check out ringer Dot com. It's R-A-I-N-G-R dot com. And if you're looking for, like we talked about in the front of the interview, um, just like you're in the same room as someone, it's clear. It works its magic as it uploads. I don't know how it works because it's patent. So, you, you know, you, uh, it's protected in some fashion, but, you know, it balances it and does, does its thing. So it comes out clear on the other side. Um, Tim, since this is Inspired Insider, I always ask, what's been a a low moment that you had to push through and then what's been a proud moment um what's been a low moment that you had to push through because uh, um, starting company business is not wise, easy. like ringer yeah. yeah um man there's there's a lot of them I, I had a friend who would tell me before i ever started this you know in business it always takes longer than it takes and it costs more than it costs um and whatever you assume it's going to be you know add a lot um, and I think I've been through several low points of this is going to cost more than we have uh, or take longer than we have. And, you know, the, the key to succeeding in the startup, at least early on, is keeping the lights on tomorrow. Um, and, you know, it, it, the goal is always that, you know, seven figure exit and, you know, IPO or whatever. But. And for a dreamer, that's what you want to focus on, right? But when you're leading a company, um, you know, when I had 88 cents in my bank account, I, I couldn't dream about a seven-figure exit or an IPO. I had to go, you know, can I pay my Amazon AWS storage costs next month? Um, so those are sort of struggles that, that I have. And I think every entrepreneur or founder has. A, um, my dream is like two weeks away pretty much all the time from completely collapsing. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and and that's, that's hard to live with while you're trying to lead and innovate and um, do the right thing. Right. Um, and there is no manual for the right thing. You just got to figure it out. Um, for me, I think, um, and I'm, I'm not a golfer at all, though I brought it up one other time today. I, the startup process is a little like golf like at least my golf game, like you go around the course, you hit it into weeds, you hit it off trees, into the water, you're fighting off geese to get to your ball or whatever. Um, and, and it's a slog and you're like on 13th hole going, I'm never, ever, ever going to play golf again in my entire life ever. It's just terrible. And then on the 14th tee, you rip one 
right down the center and you go, I could go pro, you know, like this, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and I feel like the process has been a little bit of that. It, you know, it's a slog and you're in the weeds and you're rustling with all sorts of things. And then you get a phone call uh, or you, you get a support ticket from a famous person who you go, holy crap, you use our product? This is amazing. Um, and and that gives you the energy to go, man, this slog is worth it. You know, it's hard, um, but uh, we really are doing something worthwhile. We do have people who, who care and, and big name people who care. And that's enough to play another round tomorrow. Yeah. Moments of brilliance for sure. Yeah, I yeah. get that. Select, but yes. <laughs> what about proud moments? Yeah, I mean, I think some of those phone calls I mentioned would fall into that category of, um, you know, for me as a communicator, realizing and seeing actual evidence that something I've communicated has has resonated with somebody to the point that they're going to spend money and trust me and my company to do work for them, that's a big deal. Um, and so anytime I get to talk with somebody who says, hey, you know, I've, I've used your product um that's that's a pretty cool thing and and sometimes we don't even meet because of ringer for example um i uh i went on a date a few months ago with with somebody completely out of the blue didn't know this person um she didn't know anything about me really other than the basics and we got talking she's like yeah i'm thinking about starting a podcast i was on one recently um that was pretty cool i'm like oh i work at a company that helps with podcasts and she's like what is it and i said ringer she's like Oh my gosh, we used you to do the interview that I just did a few weeks ago. And so like even small stuff like that, I mean, it's stupid in the grand scheme of things, but it, it really is fulfilling. Cool. And those are proud moments for me. So. And it, it leads to a second date. No, it I'm might lead to a second date. <laughs> that's, that's no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim, I, I have a question about voice health. Um, I'm curious about, you know, you use your voice. I remember a couple weeks ago, I was going to do an interview and I just, my throat was scratchy. I was like, well, I don't have to announce at the Pacers game or anything. <laughs> so it's it's going to be fine for me. Right. What do you do pre and post to make sure like your voice stays how it should? Because I mean, athletes stretch. What do you do? Right. Well, it, it is a muscle. And so using the muscle helps strengthen it just in general. Uh, that doesn't necessarily help when it it's hurting, but leading up to it, it keeps you from hurting as often when it's something that you work so frequently. And so I talk all day, every day. Um, and usually I'm, I'm pushing, you know, certainly at public address events I am. Um, so that, that helps. However, uh, I do get a cold. I do get tired. Uh, I do work two games in a day sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I wish I had a, a tried and true method that from yeah. beginning to end. Works I figured every time. you're like I have this special elixir that I gargle with after each. You no, know, if or I something. start to feel anything in yeah. my throat, I take I do the emergency, dump it in some water, stir it up, and drink that. Uh, usually first thing in the morning to fight off any cold or sinus junk um, because that's really the biggest problem. Knock on wood, I, I haven't had strep throat or any throat issues for for a couple of decades, but I'll get a cold from, from yeah. time to time. And uh, sometimes you just got to push through it and you, you're not going to sound the same, but you got to sound okay. Um, my, my voice has cracked at a soccer match or two when you've got that head cold that you're trying to, to fight. Um, but it happens right. and uh you, you do what you gotta do I have your throat lozenges and uh tea warm tea from time to time but i don't have any super secret formula no okay just curious no. yeah good question though all right thank you tim i just want to be the first one to you know really appreciate you taking the time everyone check out ringer.com and uh have fun at the pacers game awesome thanks so much man i appreciate the uh, the opportunity to be on thanks what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand 